in there, I guess that would be out of the ordinary during the fourth quarter. We had our contribution to Edmo rent utility and um, burial assistance um, applications and individuals that were assisted during the fourth quarter. Um, one thing um, we did do is just kind of pull some information from um, the previous fiscal year. Just, just found it a little bit interesting because it seemed like we did have you know, quite, quite a bit of applicants, especially during the last half of the fiscal year. And if you evaluate that, you know, the previous fiscal year, we had no request for burial systems during the past. We had one, two, three, four, or five um, that were authorized. And, and those are a, a pretty big um, expense. And then also comparatively, as far as just rent and utility assistance, we were um, more than three times the amount this past fiscal year than the previous fiscal year. So there's a lot of need out there, so that's really consistent with what we've been hearing from um, Upper Des Moines Ministerial Association and all the other agencies that assist with those types of things. So I just wanted to... What's our burial system? Is it 800 or is it 500? It's a limit of um, yeah. maximum of 2,000. It is all that. Yeah. So we're pretty good yeah. on that compared to yeah. some yeah. counties because I was yeah. reading 4,000. Yeah. Yeah. Just raised it a little bit. So we're pretty... Yeah. Fairly yeah. generous on that. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have any, you don't have any problems like getting data in No, no. Well, we're just getting into the new fiscal year. We ended the last one okay. So we just have to... Really uh, like I said, you know, especially when the light heat assistance ends, we saw a pretty big influx um, of applications, you know, and some people don't. Some people qualify and some people don't, you know, so we really have to read through mm -hmm. those applications fairly closely. And it is pretty it's time pretty time intensive to get all the information that's required to show eligibility. So so yeah, I don't nothing out of the ordinary I guess to talk about, but just found it interesting comparing from year to year, you know, the increase we saw last just year. Trace it where it's at. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'll make the motion to accept and place on file a general assistance quarterly report. Do I have a second? Moved by Rick, second by Mort. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both nay. Both in favor. Anything else for Kathy? I did. I wanted to visit with the board just a little bit about. Um, one of the full-time case managers in our office has requested to reduce her hours. Um, she is going to pursue some um, individual business interests personally, and um, I've talked with our regional director, Bob Lincoln, um, who's very supportive of that. Um, visited with Jerry a little bit about that, because basically right now with um, Medicaid managed care and the uncertainty of 
you know, how that's going to impact our targeted case management program because that is funded through Medicaid. We would not look to replace any positions mm -hmm. for people who leave. And so we would... And yet we're not ready to wind down because we're right. still in yes. coverage. Yep. Kind of caught in the catch it is kind yep. of a good, good working situation. It, it is a good situation. It's a win-win situation, really, if the offering her the ability to begin to foresee something. Because you know, we wouldn't even begin to go out and try and hire somebody right. like that, not knowing where nobody will come, probably. Right. We'd like to get well, it'd be difficult to hire right at this juncture just because we, know we don't know um, as far as um, <coughs> Medicaid has selected four um, managed care organizations for the state that was announced a few weeks ago, and right now they're in a period of reconsideration for any of those that were not chosen. They have the ability to go back um, to the department and inquire. Yeah, yeah, and inquire. Yeah, yeah. They're decided on the floor yet. Right, and so that could push it back even further. So you know, we were anticipating to know, you know, come. They, they're still saying January 1st that they are to be rolling out, but we just don't know. And we you know, don't know. And they may be rolling out, but not very smoothly. Right. That's what I'm afraid Right. And so we don't really know how we'll transition our if or even transition those medical services. Will she have any interest at some point, you know, of still doing three part time hours if, yeah. and then, you know, not be able to, you know, for I think, Yeah, you know, I think right now, you know, what she and I have discussed is just, you know, if she, she wants to work 30 hours per week, um, so she could maintain her benefits, and I think that's reasonable, and it's it's really needed by our office at this juncture, just because it's like you just out of the person with 30 hours, you right. down to nothing. Right. right. It would be pretty hard to to get done all the things we need to. Right. Correct. And if we have to be very careful, the department saying, I don't even want to work 30 hours. I don't want to work 30 hours. Mm -hmm. We get a whole bunch of 30 hour people, but this might right. be different. Yeah, no, I guess I we're, we're very fortunate that she wants to do that. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Palmer told us the other day, I mean, these change, I'll go through some of that in my committee report, but, you know, there's a lot of changes coming really quick. Yeah. The whole scheme of things is going to look different. So we look, mm -hmm. with Medicaid, it's all about Medicaid now. Yeah. And how, we don't know yet how that's going to work. Yeah, so that's right. We're so in the middle. I just wanted to, to visit with the board. Um, just in regard to that, that's, you know, what I would advocate. And would you keep us informed, you know, if she sure. decides to go to last or let us know what's going yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. So she's she wondering if she could or if she wanted to start meeting? No, she wants to start um, in September 1st. So. Okay. 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 Can we make it retroactive to the 1st? I would think so. Okay. Oh, let let me ask you this, Carl, because I, I understand Carl's concern. I think he's got a good no, yeah, he point. But is there any way in that motion we could state something, you know, we're going to allow this going down to 30 hours and, and, and you're still going to get to insurance, but this is not a practice. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out how you would word that. Yeah, I, can't set a you know, I'm to say, yeah, I don't want to set a precedent, but I'm, I'm thinking we're in a place where this position could be eliminated and it would be hard to replace and get anybody, so that way it's even shorter. Mm -hmm. So maybe Peggy and I can work on something. Why don't you and I work on that? Really? Mm -hmm. You know, just so there's a little clause in there. Even if you want to hear it, because I know he's trying to get out there, but yeah, 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 No, I mean, for right now, we'll look at utilizing our existing staff just with the. I'm just saying, if she goes down to 10 hours or something, yeah, you know, know the direction, then, then maybe we couldn't let her be part of time. It would have to be, right. you know, this isn't going to work. We, we need yeah. to hire somebody. I think it's just going to require ongoing <coughs> evaluation between our local board and the regional yeah. um, administration right. to see what the needs are. Because I think now yeah. that we've you know, we're a part of a combined case management program, likely what they would look at is reaching out to surround, surrounding counties to see, you know, what, what case those look like. And well, did you say she was one that did private? Not, not, not private? No, 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 it's just a whole different business venture. Yeah, it has nothing to do with, right. new with Medicaid yeah. services or anything okay. like that. Just a new direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess I have a different okay. opinion after you explained it to me. I was fearful that 
Oh. Take another job. Hopefully, I can come up with a little statement that will kind of clarify that. We'll put on the agenda. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And maybe you like it's only good for so long to. I think we do. You know, only good for six months. Or John maybe. might have an idea for us too. All right. Pretty sure. <laughs> 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 it looks like you want to be there. Yeah, but yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's the words. We just make sure we're saying what we want to say. Okay, moving on the agenda, we have resolution 2015 20. Can you explain this to us? Yes, I received a note from Dorothy um, and Whitney saying in order to comply with our loans that we've had, um, we need to have this resolution. Um, explaining what our tax compliance procedures are. And it's really very basic as far as the resolution goes. It says resolution adopting and approving tax compliance procedures relating to tax exempt bonds, whereas pursuant to the laws of the state of Iowa, the section 103 of the Internal Revenue Code, Humboldt County, Iowa, the county, acting by and through the authority of its board of supervisors, has issued and likely will issue in the future tax exempt municipal bonds, notes, or other obligations the tax exempt bonds. And whereas the county deems it necessary and desirable to adopt certain procedures and practices to be followed by the county in connection with the issuance of tax exempt bonds, and whereas proposed tax compliance procedures are attached here to with Exhibit A, the compliance procedures, now therefore be resolved by the Board of Supervisors of Humboldt County, Iowa, as follows. Section 1, the compliance procedures attached here to as Exhibit A are hereby adopted and shall be dated as of the date hereof. And Section 2, the County Auditor is hereby authorized and directed to periodically update the compliance procedures in accordance with the Internal Revenue Code and supporting Internal Revenue Service rulings and regulations with advice from Bond Council. In Section 3, all resolutions or parts of resolutions in conflict herewith are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflicts. Um, the lease will be filed if, if all the details are set out in that attachment A um, with internal revenue service for our county. And those need to be on file. Well, they already have one and just make it legal. You bet. It's not another loan, it's not another bond. It's just a resolution. It's a resolution team. saying this is what our procedures are and this is standard practice for um, counties i make a motion to approve resolution 2015-20, and this is the resolution adopting and approving the tax compliance procedures related to the tax exempt bonds. Mm -hmm. I will second that motion. Second the motion. Second approve resolution 2015-20. Other discussion? Really, this is the paperwork that makes it uh, tax exempt for the lenders to give us a cheaper rate. Mm -hmm. That's what it helps them out for because then they don't pay income tax on the interest they earn. It backs up them, you know. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. No one carry. Jenna. What's the center? No, it's not really a no. situation <laughs> deal that I told the city of Tacoma City I would answer any questions you might have. There's a request to um, Abate the taxes on the property that they obtained the tax sale deed in Dakota City at um, 306. Yeah, it was lot 10, part of lot 10, lot 22, and they were using it, I think, for some backup well, maybe. I'm not quite sure yeah, what you got. I don't know about just going on a new well or something. They paid the drainage assessment that was outstanding, and then so it'll be about, it's uh, about eleven hundred twelve dollars of current year and back taxes that have never been paid by this individual. We've had a county held certificate on it since that was it. Two thousand eight that they acquired in March of this year and then those were abated at that time. We just want to get the rest of them that were part of that package cleared off so they can mm -hmm. move forward. Sounds good. So is that an empty lot or is there a... It's an empty lot now. They torn the house down a long time ago, I think. Prior to 2008, the house was removed by the city because it was abandoned from an eyesore. 
It is cleaned up by the city, mm -hmm. and then they have a, another use for it. And they pay the drainage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. I don't think you have any, we don't have a whole lot of options. Well, I think it's a good option for them to get it back. We get put out here yeah. to you, but we're not going to get tax money on it anymore. Yeah, it's just an outfit away on my book. You clear up the land for them to move forward and not get them any more assessments. We need a motion on that? Yeah. Uh, motion to abate tax. I'd make that motion. One second. Base practice on the lot. This one is in the Flynn Madonna. Other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. 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 Um, there's nothing on there for drainage. Right now it's open. So I'll leave it to you whether you want to have a meeting on the 8th or the 7th. I'll find out. Okay. I'll make a motion to cancel the board meeting September 7th and wait until the next following week. Second. Motion and second to cancel the board meeting on September 7th. And then it's a regular day holiday. Other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those in aye. Can I miss something just real quick? I um, wanted to let you know the school election, of course, is uh, yeah, coming up in September 3rd, September 2nd, no, September 8th, and then we have to canvas on the 11th for that, so I wanted you to get it on the calendar. Okay. Um, I will go with this when canvas on Friday for the 11th for the school. Well, I mean, at least, you know, three people there for a quorum. We've only had three school districts, but we wouldn't take two off the long. Um, it depends on when the mail comes in. If we have any absentees out there, we have to be sure we have them in by the time of the canvas, and our mail doesn't come from them. But we can schedule that on close for nine, and if it's not there by, we can check. We've done it at one o'clock before, too. It yeah. doesn't make any difference to us, probably. I would because it just clears it up. One o'clock on Friday, again, it's a school election day. Right here, right here, right here. Yep. Here's the book. Here's the book. Yeah. Here's the book. We've canceled the meeting for the 7th, right? Right. How about the Halloween scene meeting? I don't know. I haven't asked Brooke yet. I was going to do that. Yeah. After we were done, it's not part of your meeting, so. And it's not part of this meeting, but we gotta come in this way if we're gonna hold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's entirely up to you guys. Yeah. And so, all I have to do is we're gonna come down there and see what's. There's Linda coming down to the Let's go through it. Let's wait for the committee reports till we're done. It's 9 o'clock because I got a lot of stuff. We're getting that in my call. Yeah. 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 Good morning. Well, I see he's still in, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to have to have surgery on that all sometime. Yeah. I'll play before winter. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be fun on ice, would it? No, it wouldn't. Yeah. What's good? Oh, I was a part in the yard and threw my knee out, and I decided to go right there, and it's pretty much a little bone now, Ouch. so I'm going to have to have a new replacement. Absolutely. My wife had it done a year ago, so she came on just a while. Oh, yeah. They give you a quarter zone shot. Okay. Did they give you a quarter zone job? Yeah, they did, yeah, yeah. Well, that helped a lot. Yeah. <coughs> they said you might get by for two years. That's right. Yeah. So it's interesting to see how that works. Well, they never had a month first. We have some time there already. Okay, good. We will visit a Wednesday claim. Yes, we have a couple. Um, Disabled Veterans Homestead Tax Credits that I need to have you approve for the 2014 assessment payable 1560, which is right now. It is a couple that we miss getting um, approved by you. Um, there was a um, 
the part we were loving memo that came out in June that says uh, applications received for benefits. Dun, dun, dun. <coughs> if received before the extended deadline of July 1st, 2015, uh, will qualify. And they did. Okay. So we need to get those corrected and um, Jana will make the corrections for these people and I think she's one of them wants to have his uh, tax statement we sent to him, so I'm sure that should be no problem. And they're, they're qualified to get to where to do it for them. Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. We must give it here to you to, for your approval. And there's a little bit of confusion on all of this. Um, Was this a new change with the legislation? Yes. They had to extend the deadline. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. anyway, uh, the first two. <coughs> I said we're on that way, Jake. If they come to me, I want to be approved also. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <coughs> Are we trying to keep those confidential? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll have more for you coming up probably in the next month for approval for uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. I know. The girls, we're going to start driving today. So, time to go. <laughs> and Peggy, I haven't got a chance to visit with you about these yet, so. What's their move? Yeah. Okay. You need to visit with me. Yeah. Can you just get me a copy of them? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it done. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there won't be a connection on the so 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 The connection the last time I looked on this was in the north front, off the north side in the intersection. <laughs> but that was because there was a blowhole in the... Well, I was just concerned about having a connection underneath the road. You know, because connections is quite often where you have a problem, and I didn't know if it should Well, and we were looking at, uh, hopefully we don't have a problem with that drain tile, because then at that point it would be whether or not we take it all the way across the road. Because mm -hmm. it diagonals and goes clear southwest would be another 100 foot of pavement, probably. Yeah. So uh, the other one is a Jack, uh, Jack the casing, still casing, and the newest one is uh, RCP to a CMP. So, uh, did you find him yet? Didn't find him. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. There is the one anyway that would be the answer now. But, uh, no, we, uh, our history, Humboldt County's history with that cross pipe was uh, probably 10 years ago we had a hole in the radius on the, on the north side and we worked on that and that's why we knew that wasn't real good then. We fixed it, uh, patched it, but uh, we're going to tear that out up to the edge and hopefully we find mm -hmm. wood tile before we get under the road. Mm -hmm. Then extend it on out. We have wood items to extend it with RCP and then what, a 20 foot CMP because the whole ditch will get moved to the north. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, yes, it is probably a 100 year old tile underneath there. Hopefully we don't have to start replacing all that. We should go back further in the field and just bypass the road and bring it around. Just a thought. Because we are going, how big a tile is it? 24 inch. A tile is not 20, the outlet, the outlet's 24, right. and uh, it's like a 16 or an 18 or something like that. Too bad to move that out with. That's the, the catch with that is we have intakes in the north side, and we got you never know what connections you have underneath yeah, the road. Yeah, that's the there could be more in connections underneath. And then there's just one. There is one coming from the northwest that teams into it somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it would a matter. It'd be a matter of trying to track those and make sure you got them all. Uh, those things happen. Yeah. No. Hopefully it looks in pretty decent shape. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, we have uh, on the agenda an EC source temporary access and formal hearing. We get copies of some of these press. Uh, what we did uh, to all property owners, I'm going to back up and see the door so I can see my exit. Um, Maybe the window. <laughs> back in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, just the whole packet. Uh, I think that the board's got it, Bruce got one, and I give it to the media. But we sent a letter out to. Uh, Property owners along the MVP three transmission project. East. Uh, EC source permitted and constructed temporary accesses for power line pole construction through Humboldt County. Although accesses were constructed as temporary and do not meet Humboldt County entrance policy, the Board of Supervisors has received some requests to keep them as permanent driveways. Copies of the EC source permit and the Humboldt County entrance permit and policy are included for review. So we sent everything out uh, to all the property owners, uh, including a copy of EC source's temporary access permit that uh, says temporary widened bags will be restored to original width with all extensions being removed and that uh, all driveways and extensions shall be temporary. Um, EC source permitted them as temporary to be fully removed and restored. The entrance policy was included, our current driveway policy, um, both the permit itself and the policy, 
and then it will continue with. If you want the temporary ac access considered as permanent, the attached deficiencies must be addressed. So they inventoried every driveway out there before they started and inventoried every access uh, that EC stores installed and addressed as to what part if uh, what deficiencies to our current policy just to see how close they were uh, and, and what would have to be fixed to make them meet policy. If you do not want an EC source access as a permanent driveway, EC source will remove and restore to the original condition as permitted. If we don't hear from you or if you did fill out, the question here is no, they'll continue on and do business as they intended to as permitted. We did say please indicate your choice on the enclosed questionnaire, return it to us or bring it to the board meeting here, blah, blah, blah. And that's where we're at. But the temporary access uh, questionnaire, there's Mr. Warren from Dakota City. Um, we have representatives that now enter, uh, let me finish this, then I'll introduce uh, who's here from staff and we'll go on. But uh, did we ask for uh, if the property owners would return uh, the questionnaire and the questionnaire is no, I do not want the EC source temporary access or extension. Yes, I want it. Uh, and if you wanted it, it would have to be uh, to form the the uh, following corrections and there was a list of about seven of them that you could have if everything wasn't up to snuff and some were as few as three or four. The one was replace sand fill with suitable soil fill. Else drive shall be maintained by landowner. Number two, lower pipe drive to original floor line of the ditch. Most of them except for extensions and uh, and uh, they will probably correct me. Most were just wrote in. We did not make them established floor line in the ditch after all their temporary, so they just rolled the pipe in and built the driveway. In many cases, they're high above the ditch floor line, and that's where they need to be lowered if they were to be kept as a permanent one. We need ballast rock from top of the drive or cover with suitable roadstone, in other words, choke it off. Driveway too high, lower drive to match shoulder. Uh, some of the driveways were higher than uh, the shoulder of the road and uh, we're just built up with material. I think you got cheap rock and a few of them and they're high, I'm not sure. But, uh, well, the, the driveways we, we put in there and then you had to add the, the rock, that, that rock is for, it's for track output, which is why we have to put the rock in. So some of them got the, the rock itself. Some of the ends, uh, shape gravity end slips, the three to one for a gravel road, it would be six to one for a highway to meet uh, the current entrance policy. Uh, remove steel or concrete extensions and replace with leg pipe. Some couple instances were extended with, uh, with a steel pipe on concrete. Uh, in, in one case I know, uh, I, I'm aware of where it was 15 inch concrete and the 18 inch was stuck over it temporarily just to widen it. Um, and then uh, lastly was remove existing driveways. Our policy has limits on how many driveways you can have and if you already had an excess uh, number of driveways you would have to remove one if you wanted to leave one. The final option was, um, that we listed was uh, the, the, we had the no, the yes, in other words you'd fix it to the yes and the option was EC source does a partial driver removal leaving the pipe, in pipe intact undamaged. Then, order, it, then the owner could build the driveway from that point to meet specs or Humboldt County would lower the pipe and replace with suitable no suitable material at uh, a cost for our driveway policy. Uh, so at least he'd salvage the pipe. We asked DC Source to get rid of most of the material, the sand, the rocks, and whatever, and then we'd end up lowering the pipe as needed and placing the fill on and, and extending or finishing the driveway. But uh, with that, I will let uh, Mr. Warren introduce his guests. So I, I invited EC Stores here um, just so we could get through this uh, so everybody knew what the, 
who's on first and who's on second. At some point in the near future, he's going to want to come in and start pulling guys. And we don't want him out there standing there. Is this one that we need to leave? Is this one we need to do whatever? We want them to know what they can do and be able to do it and keep doing it. So Tim, you have this yours? My name is Tim Warren. I'm with EC Source. And I have Daryl Underwood, who is our um, manager of the roads. And I have uh, Camille Dawkins here that is also our environmental manager. Uh, with this project, we installed the driveways in there to have temporary access, and it was under the understanding that the gates are all going to be temporary access. And in doing so, at the conclusion of the project, our intentions were to pull everything out, get rid of everything, have everything restored back to its original, and then uh, our environmental group would go back through and uh, restore everything back to uh, with the uh, seating and all that to where it moves back to its original form. So this was our intent. Our intent was not to be leaving these as um, full-time accesses. And that was never our intent. And that was something that uh, Paul and I were very clear about from the get-go of this project, is that this was completely complete and temporary. Uh, it was, they were built to where the, the, uh, the road stone was on there that would help with the mud and be able to dislodge the mud from the tires of the, the trucks that were at it gaining access, and that's what it, its purpose was. So, uh, as far as uh, we now, we're, uh, you know, we're prepared to continue on with our, our project, and uh, on uh, Paul's uh, uh, direction, whether or not we remove the entire driveway or we only remove a portion of it, we'll will be according to what this board and guys recommend. Yeah. Did anybody got about 50% responded? Is that what your final tip? Uh, <laughs> the 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 land owner, county right here. Yes. Of the landowners, we have 19 out of 36 that have responded. Um, of those 19, three of them want the driveways. 26 need a driveways total. 26 do not want the driveway and 5 want to take the option where we remove, or you remove some of it and we'll bring back the bill or lower the pipe of will at the county to do that. 57 total driveways. I know you asked me the other day as to how many there were. I knew it was 50 some and 34 of them that are responded. Well, it's my understanding if we need to these driveways. It, it becomes the responsibility of the county to maintain correct? Our driveway policy is once they're built <laughs> under 50 feet, it's our responsibility for the driveways. So that'd be one reason why we're going to have to spec. We're going to have to maintain you want to be a spec driveway. Well, it's per policy. It would be a uniform policy throughout the county. Anybody, anybody want to say anything about anything? One side or the other, pros, cons? There's only three people told that want them left. So far, yeah. that have responded. So then, well, two that I responded yes to, I'm two of the three. Um, it's, no, these are the ones that have handed in their sheet. I handed it a sheet. Oh, then yes, you are two of the three. <laughs> 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 no, I know. And these two others or three others that said they wanted that are not here. So I don't, I mean, I'm just questioning the numbers because. Yes. Well, this is the one that I received. Well, I, I, I chose that $400 option. Right, right. So that's, I said, yeah. in your side, that's a free yeah. yeah. option. So, so there would be five more that would want to right. keep the drive. Right. And I guess my question is, I look at the two driveways that are on the property of my brother and sister who said they would like them left. They're perfectly good driveways. We've driven over them. Obviously, EC's driven over them. I don't see why we want to continue problems and tear them up so that you can tell us to come in and put black dirt or whatever in. And the other thing is, EC has cleaned up all the piles of dirt that were there that I couldn't use to do it myself are gone now, so I have to buy it from somebody. So I don't think we should continue the problems with you guys. And if we can do whatever leveling of the line, I don't see a problem with the ballast on top. But that's just me as a 
one of my sister's brothers who want those left, that we can do a little fixing to make them work out without tearing them up and putting black dirt and hauling more gravel in there. It just seems like we're just adding on to the problems that Humboldt County has had with some of their dealings with EC. That's just me personally. All the specs for those driveways originally, I mean, safety is one issue, obviously, and, and the pipe where the pipe lays in the ditch, obviously, the great water is an issue. But as far as the actual material that goes into them, I mean, I know I talked to Ben a little bit and, and Dave about kind of a squish factor there with sand and stuff, but um, I, I can't imagine a driveway getting packed any better than what these driveways are packed right now. They've had cement trucks, 150 ton cranes, you name it, over there, and I've been on those driveways, and I don't think I can move them with any piece of equipment of my own. No, sand, sand packs very well confined, and, and uh, under what conditions on a beach, you need a beach bug, beach buggy to drive. Uh, uh, sand highly erodible, no, uh, no binder in it. Uh, with time, I would see the edges eroding off, washing the sand into the bottom of the ditch. We don't use sand back in a box culvert, for instance, for some of the same reasons, because of the end or the joint issues uh, with sand. Uh, um, but uh, in the long haul, even uh, when you're building a sandbox, you put boards around it to confine the sand. Uh, and the confinement or uh, some kind of uh, minus material, and it's something that would hold moisture, some kind of bind or something that would get rid of uh, that's why our policy specs dirt. That, that's why we put rock on the slopes. Right. I say, it's all rock. rock. So you don't like the sand. Is that doesn't mean better weight of the water. So you you choked it. You choked it for the uh, yeah, uh, short term. And uh, and some of it's eroding around the edges. And, and with years, uh, it might or might not. I don't, I'm not trying to be smart, but when they covered the highly the the very black top road over half that road was uh shouldered with the exact with way sandier product that went there which one did you say the very burn to highly uh the north side of hardy uh the the it it from i don't know was it from mar myers or somewhere in there to the worst story i heard on the similar was the church road the church road is the story that i heard the worst story on shouldering that's why we have no ditch there anymore the because the whole works just keep settling well, i mean that was way tighter like this is that was good enough then that's what i don't well i don't know that it was good enough then the result is over the last years we don't have any ditch anymore is because it flattened and pancaked out. Yeah, it wasn't suitable back then and it still isn't suitable yeah. now. Why it was accepted or whatever, I understand uh, a now deceased contractor uh, uh, was responsible for one of those. Uh, and I've worked with uh, this gentleman before too. So well, it was our fault for allowing it to happen. Potentially. Yeah, potentially. I mean, we still watch. I don't know all the circumstances. I see the results on it now, and I hear the complaints on the church road is one of them, where there is uh, wide, flat shoulders and no ditch. And our guys. But I'm just that is in the house of the the bills on there. It's it's covered with ballast. My opinion is they're going nowhere. You know, I mean, just a lot more expense for us. I mean. And I guess I don't understand that in parentheses, Alex's driveway should be maintained by the landlord. Every driveway I have, I maintain. And never, I guess I've never seen the county maintain my driveways in all the years that I've lived in the exact same place and used some of the exact same driveways. If the driveways are fixed, it's our, been my responsibility to get rock or whatever and fix it. So I've never seen where the county's put out money to dump rock or anything on any of these driveways. And when we widened the driveway, I hired you guys and paid 800 and some bucks to widen it. And these driveways that are existing are, in my mind, better shape than the ones that I paid 800 and some dollars to have the county put in. Uh, in many cases, uh, um, first off on the rock, if the rock, uh, we rock 
driveways to a residence within the right of way. All other driveways we don't. We rock them if we think they're low, not necessarily at the request of the residents. The balance of them we don't rock, you're correct. Um, that's the property owner. If he does an extension, I don't know if you had rock on your extension or not, you would have paid for it at that time. But what happens is many cases we do replace the pipe or fix the pipe. We have those holes in the driveway. Uh, uh, when we go to do the replacement uh, or the extension, uh, in many cases uh, the old pipe is pulled and we put two new in at the time. So yeah, we. Uh, we do fix them. I'm just saying, Paul, I've got holes that's on my driveways and I fix them, and the county has never done nothing. That's my point. You can say whatever you want. But I've fixed them myself and don't expect the county to. Here, I think we have perfectly good driveways sitting there that are not going to hurt anything, and we can fix a little bit, but you're telling us we have to tear out so we can spend more money. Just for me to take on the problem in here, Paul's got to do a lot in our he has a policy that he's trying to follow. And then when it's free money, you go around. You know as well as I do that policy changes. He has to change the policy. Your policy changes. changes, you know as well as I do. Whatever. I mean, I understand how there is policy, but I also understand they can change. And I've seen them change, change, so I don't buy that argument. Sorry. We have to make an exception. Well, that's it. And I think it's a good thing to have the policy because if the county's going to put in a driveway for me, I'm going to pay money for it. I want something to spec. There needs to be specs in order to, to live by that and say, hey, it's done right. And I guess that point Marshall makes there about making an exception here, you know, is there something these landowners can do to sign off to say, well, as long as it doesn't create a safety issue, if our slope on the end of those driveways are appropriate, and as long as, you know, if you decide that you want smaller block put on top to top it off, to a very large ballast getting out of the road or whatever, you know, that'd be a lot cheaper. I mean, I know there's been a lot of discussion about the time allocation in the county. They really do a lot of work out there on, on tie on the road ditches and other things. And to me, this just looks like a lot more work to go to for something that's already in place that appears to be fairly workable. And if in 20 years or 30 years, the ends of those things start to road, you know, can we put something in the state that says we have to repair or take it out at that time at our expense? I mean, as long as it's intact, I don't think anybody knows for sure. Some of those driveways are at a point of the ditch where there's very little water moving. Right. I, I drove the route and looked at, got out and walked every single driveway out there. And some of them are higher than the road, where you track the ballast out of the road. Or, you know, and I can see where they need to come out. There's a few that were really, where the ditch is really soaked in, and the pipes, you know, there's only about four inches of material over the pipe because the thing is filled in. There, there's a few of them that have issues. And there's a lot of them that, like you say, are very good driveways. And uh, I think we probably need to make some exceptions to our ordinance uh, to allow some of them. Um, and more like on an individual basis where the landowners want them. And uh, I hope we can work out something in our ordinance to allow these drivers where the people want to keep them and where they do look good. Um, there's a couple there on the drag strip where the, I could just see them traveling out rock under the road constantly and that'd be a I very hit on those. Is one, the reason why they were higher is if it was an existing driveway, we, we didn't tear it out. We mm -hmm. just covered it. Well, we just put rock over it. That's why your rock's higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the driveway, or at yeah. the drag strip, especially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was already an existing one there, and that's why some of the pipe maybe soaked it in, is because they were already there. They were already there, yeah. Yeah, and we just rocked it for our, you know, we, our environmental view, we had to rock it. And we have to comply with our permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they have to have access to the power line? With, I mean, those are higher than what the electric I mean, companies have. Uh, uh, future access. What's, what happens then if you have to do some power line the way which gives them the right to have access to them? Then they come in. Do they have to drive in if they throw them out? There is no uh, right to a drive. Basically, they'll run down the road. They're yeah. just going to run down. They'll go into anywhere. So they're not going to put it in the driveway. They'll end up going up into the property and tearing up the fields to go down. Into, they'll go down from the highway, save the drive. Yeah. Truck. They'll take off from the highway, and they'll run down to all those fields, tear it all up to get back in because they don't have any driveway there. Yeah. That's their right. So 
when you take driveways out, you take that chance that if they have a problem, they're going to get out and tear your field back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that right away was negotiated with the landowners, correct? Yeah, they had one of those that were Yeah, they were signed for that. Yeah. Right. And they'll get big damages at that time and whatever. Yeah, that's right. The driveways were, the were basically, my two lines are like, right, right by the pole, so they wouldn't have to drive through the whole people. Right. They right. drive 50 feet each side of the pole, and so, I mean, here again, I think at some point we have to look at what makes practical sense and work with the policy or whatever rather than just trying to tell them you're tearing my or else or giving the penalty this much money. I just, I think somewhere along the line we have to try to work together and so far I haven't, I really haven't got that impression with the meetings that I've had with Mr. Jacobs. Marshall, one of the things that the county did and the Paul did before this project started was dealt with the people that were going to the power line and negotiated an agreement with them because what we didn't want when it was done is to have 6,000 driveways. So the agreement we made with EC through, and I don't know, we had hearings, we had, I don't know how many meetings, but no one showed up there, no one said a word about it. Yeah, that yeah. talked about they would have to remove all their temporary field drives and put it back to normal. And that actually took, I don't know, how many months we worked on that. That took a long time to get everything right in that agreement. Um, and then you all and landowners, were the representatives of landowners, made your own agreement with them as far as what they paid you to put this up in the <coughs> And I mean, none of us was surprised that the driveways were going to go away. And now you're here because the board is going to allow some of the driveways to stay. You know, but there are two separate things as far as the county's agreement in here is that the driveways go away. And your agreement is for the easement and then for them to come and build it. So it's, you know, it, if you take a step back, it looks like you all are arguing for free driving. And that was not the agreement that the county made with DC prior to this happening was that it go back to how it was. And then the agreement the landowners made with DC was for the pain for the evening and building the project. Okay, so that might be all full and good in your mind legally, whatever. But we're at this point and why can't why can't realism take over what you think is full and quote legally correct? I mean I understand all the legal stuff, but let's Let's try to work with what we have because we're saying we have some good driveways out there and whoever is telling us, well, we just got to pull them all because that's the way it is. We can all work together, but we've got to be given a chance. And so far, I haven't seen that there's a lot of willingness to try to want to work with us. When you're here in the hearing, I think everybody wants to work with us. Yeah, that's the, that's the yeah. purpose of this hearing. I, I think, you know, we do make exceptions for driveways according to our policy. Now sometimes, you know, they, they bring it, every driveway that comes to the board that doesn't meet the, the, the policy. And we approve probably 90% of them. Mm -hmm. Probably 99% of them. And I think these driveways that the, the individual owners or farmers want to keep, I think we need to handle it in that fashion. Because the consensus is, out of the letters that you did get back, a lot of them do want them out. And I think the ones that want to keep keep them, bring them to the board, and we'll make a look at each one, and make it, you know. You know, is that what we're doing now? Is that what we're asking now? I think that is, that's, that's, that's what you're wanting, wanting, is to keep your yeah, driveway. I mean, that's a questionnaire and answer to as me as yeah, the Yeah, that was an option on the questionnaire, I think, is what Marsh is trying to say. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, I like the sound of what you're doing, if you're going to, you know, yeah, I'm willing to work with Paul or whoever else to let you know. Because we, we can't do a we blanket deal because some of them are really bad and some <laughs> of them are good. <laughs> and we don't need all of them. A lot no, of them we don't. don't need any. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of places. Not there's only 35 landowners involved here. 36 total landowners. How many respond? 19. 19. If you get a deadline to respond, then we can eliminate damage. 10 people want. It looks to me like we can study those 10 to make a decision on those 10 driveways and whatever it is. We make sure we get the response from all, all the landowners. 
They have a cutoff date or something. Today is today. Today is today. Today is today. And we reviewed all of them. Every letter got its own deficiency list. I mean, if it was only to choke off the top, if everything else was right and the only thing was sand backfill and to choke off the, the big side, all that's, the all, that's right. all he was listed. I mean, if it was high, it was listed as high. Okay. <laughs> this size of driveway, if a landowner came in and wanted to put one in with rock on top, what would that cost be if you installed it? $2,000? On average, they are about fifteen to $2,000. On a gravel? On a gravel road. What size are the tops on these? 50? That would be 40 to 50 foot. So a 50 foot tube and rock and fill and slow. It could be a $2,000 driveway. Right. So my understanding is when we had a work session on this and we were trying to make something that was fair for everybody, we looked at that cost. This driveway, I wouldn't say it's a gift because you guys had the responsibility of having them in there working in your field, but the driveway appeared and there was a tube there. So we thought, what's fair for somebody that would have to come in and buy a driveway for 2000 versus for five, 600 bucks, or take a driveway out for 400 it can be brought up to all the specs and meet the rest of the code for the rest of the driveways. That's what I think the board decided on the $600. Now, if that's not a fair price, and you're here to argue that, I guess we can look at it. But you've charged a $600 driveway with people? Yeah, $600 for driveway with people. That'd be on the ground. Or what? Well, just for the fact that you put the driveway in over the driveway with where it is. Well, that's a railway. That's a If that's what I'm up against. You know, they can't take our, you can't take yeah, my driveway. No, we're not going to take any of it. Any driveway that was there, we'll store it to original. Whatever it was. That's what we were going to store it before they started to make sure that we keep doing it. They're not going to take any driveway that was right back there. No. That's a timeline for easy source. I don't. At one point, we keep wanting to take a lot of it. One of the board members text me in panic uh, six weeks ago that they were coming, but I, I asked and I told Daryl that will be one of your questions. We need to have a decision made prior to them getting Right, and, and the point of the hearing now, folks, was because uh, we saw harvest coming. We didn't know for sure. Uh, the schedule was iffy as to when they'd be in. We, we not, I'm not going to be taking them out for a while, so no. we have to get in. A we don't want to do it before harvest. We wanted to get this rolling, so we didn't want to just when everybody's combine and come out of here in a combine. We in. need to get into the field again. We've still got a, you know, we've got the restoration. We're getting close on it, but we've got seeding. We've got different things that goes on that we still got to do. And I don't, I don't, that's the last thing I'll do out here. When I pull them driveways, is that's it. We'll be gone. I don't want to do it until I know for a fact that we're, everything's, I don't want to pull them in and all of a sudden, oh shit, we got to get back into it again. So we're trying to get the 1st of November to make this. Yeah, you got to walk, because uh, I'll start at Seuss when I do and start coming this way. But I'm, it's still a ways away. We're just trying to get the restoration done first. That's first and foremost. Last thing would be driveways. Well, and then the south end, or the south end of the project hasn't yeah. begun yet. Yeah, and we still have to come down and do the rest of the, so we're going to start back in here again, so. When? Um, it's. That one's going to be a, that's a tough call because we're, Mid we're down Mid towards Mid O'Brien, so February? Yeah. Mid-16th. Yeah. June. June. I'd say spring, yeah. <laughs> you want spring? No. I, I'm like, uh, August. We're coming in right August. Right in the three saw time. <laughs> 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 June, July, August. Yeah. Just for the sake of argument, what are all the other counties doing? Is that uh, the most part, the, that? I'm just curious. For the most part, they leave them. That's what I thought. This is the, uh, yeah, so pretty much. Let me clarify that is that every county was was put in the same way. As I every yeah, county that's was temporary. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to the individual landowner to go in and permit their driveway yeah. to say yeah. that it, it'll be permanent. Yeah. And the thing that we have a little different is we have what seven and a half miles parallel on the roads uh, okay. next to Kasuth. And, and that is different. That I assume there'll be a lot more of those coming out, even in because if you're going parallel. We were coming in five, six times in a field compared to the very ends. Mm -hmm. And there's usually no existing ones on the parallel. There are some, but there was uh, So we assumed that those probably a lot more would come out of there than your normal, where you're just doing mm -hmm. one on each end of each mile. And I believe Clay County is only on either end of the mile. You're all in the field, and every yeah. one of them is built two driveway standards. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
So in the cause of critter call, what do you think? We got 10 or 12, maybe it's a concern. Uh, I would have to default to the right now. Did you, did you have many people come in last spring? Because I know, I, I think I talked to Tim. Tim was going to told me that, you know, EC would just as soon leave them because they wouldn't have to have the cost to take them out. At that time, I came into the office and I was thinking, maybe Dave, you said there was a few people in asking. Yeah, I, had, I know you had. Uh, you, do you know about how many <coughs> I can tell you here in a second, but um, it may not be. Yeah, but there were very many. Half that you know, and we did. Yeah, yeah. And we had some other inquiries to that one showing up. I know one out on the south end of this that wondered what it took to keep the driveway. And he hit me uh, in passing on the road. So he hadn't been in yet, maybe more, whatever. But he got a letter now sure. trying to treat them all the same. Whatever happens, happens across the board. That's kind of why we're here, because we want to treat everybody the same. We don't want to say, you so keep it. What's your cost of, of getting those driveways out for driveway, you know? I don't know if I can put a dollar amount on it, but... Uh, Where do you go with the material? Because you can't reuse it, can you? No, I take the material to places I want to take it to, basically. So I have certain places that I'll take it. I won't send it back to the quarry because it's good material, so... Right. And uh, maybe here I would try to reuse it. Just haul it forward to the next section. But have you built them and, and uh, built them all in Webster yet? You sure? You're a logical way to think about it. Is it the wrong way to? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, then I'm fine. Well, I can't remember. Wrong person to ask. It was my crew that did it. But, uh, he might have been in Connecticut that weekend. So. I got a lot of stuff going on for a lot of, a lot of people a lot of ways. So. <laughs> So my take a rate, no matter what we do, this is going to cost six hundred dollars to drive away. Is that is that what's being so on I think some of them netted four hundred. If you remove one, remove one. You can always remove it. It depends on the situation. I mean, there's a lot. You know, uh, I met with a landowner last week. Hers came out because she was going to remove some to keep some, and it was going to cost her four hundred dollars a driveway. So what it's going to cost, uh, I mean, that's what I'm asking, it's going to cost us money no matter if they're left just like they are and we, as landowners, do some fixing, it's... Yeah. My biggest you're concern going to is the ballast material. Yeah, the ballast is my out. biggest concern. Getting yeah. drug out onto the roads. It's, it's, why, it's why, 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 the guys, they don't want it on the road. Right, our blade guys don't want it on the road. That's part of that. That's all the ballast guys have. Some part of the road are smelling out. We're not going to ask you, but in those cases, and I'm not real familiar with your record, just off the top of my head. But some of them might not be that. They're going to be right on top of the pipe. Uh, no, no, no that's I'm, and I don't. That's the balance is about this deep. The, the sand that goes up there is, is unless you got such a shallow ditch that the, the pipe filled the ditch up, you're going to have sand. Right. And that's what I'm saying. You're going to have really a place where the ditch was half full. Looks to me like maybe we've heard that. No, it would be not yet. Maybe what we need to do is add up and show you. Okay. Good plan. Good present a plan. Pros and cons, what you want, what you don't want, what needs to act, how much it cost. You need to come back and have a meeting and act on those individually. We have that, so you you would be to the point of setting a meeting. If they still wanted them, um, they would be dealt with on an individual basis. Is that what you're saying? All the nomenclature about that particular driveway. That particular driveway, every letter went out with him as to what needed to be done to meet current policy. Each situation might be a little bit different. Yeah, the situation is different. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. And we probably don't have the word NFL, and maybe just a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's probably only eight. There's probably only eight. Dave, there's probably only eight. If you want to have a question, there's probably only eight. Eight what? Driveways? Okay. So five and three? Yeah. 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 What's that? There's a total of 23 driveways that I have not had a response for yet. But there's no reason. But the landowners have like three or four. Correct. So well, today's the cutoff. We haven't had a today's the day. Yeah, we finally went to the next one. Exactly. So we don't have 23 driveways. Right, but I don't know how many of these people have. That's the part. Yeah, one right here. 
Yeah, and then we went into options, uh, um, bad ones on the highway where they were extensions and they're pretty well straight sides. So all of a sudden the guy might have had a 20 foot top with straight sides. EC extended one side and yet to meet our policy on a driveway extension, you have to flatten both sides. You might have to buy pipe for both sides. If it was outside of this, you would be required to do that. And that's why yours, if you were on the highway. Ours are brand, brand new temporary. You know, pieces that I, I understand that if we allow an exception or a case by case it would be for the material at the bottom of the sand right right because we have the valves on the top and, and you can choke them, them off that. yeah because you're out of the dirt yeah but you know is that if, is it an option to have a separate review case by case of each driveway and the reason we're here is it's 1200 bucks a piece in our opinion that's too much money to keep we don't need it that badly it'd be nice to have but not a must have and that's kind of Really, all we say is the cost of the pipe. Right. That's well, exactly what you say by this is you're saving the cost right. of the pipe. And since the dirt got hauled away, we've got yeah, to run away from it. That's Daryl. What do you mean? You could have saved me a lot of oil a lot of times. You wouldn't have been lying there, I guess. You wouldn't have been lying there. You wouldn't have been lying there. You wouldn't have been lying there. You wouldn't have been on the case of this, he, he sent them out generically to the landowner. If they were all along the highway, they got a flat price. I don't know if they all, we might have answered his question already. Individually, if somebody wants to know what, I want to keep this driveway here, I don't care about those or whatever. If that's the issue, they need to see Dave. Because the price is probably there, but the, uh, conditions for keeping it might change from one driveway to the next depending on what they keep. I don't know. I don't and know. That's where I was talking well, about that one up in North. And for her price came way down, down the letter was to have she was removing the one to keep it beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're not making a decision today. We figured right. there'd be a uh, plan Z somewhere. Right. How come you get credit for removal? We'd like to get rid of the driveways because we do maintain them. <laughs> Not contrary to uh, in the Hardy area we don't, but the rest of the county we do. Oh, uh, I was marginalized. I've never. We, we I, I, I get it. this place when 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 they work on the Laverne blacktop, they'll come in and you know do like you said, the fill it or whatever. You know, I put a rock. It. There's not much maintenance. So your only maintenance to these driveways is if they fill up with corn stalks or. Or if there's holes, I mean, if they're active floors, they suck dirt and get holes. I assure you, we have farmers yeah. that call us and yeah. tell us that our way is not working. That. Um, I, uh, what percentage? It's I not very really much. I mean, yeah. I don't, but, I'm uh, not arguing. From our perspective, the fewer driveways we have is the less probably helps the for the vehicle uh, for yeah. any launch site for any potential uh, uh, embankment that a car may hit. The fewer we have, the less exposure we have. Looks to me like we're going to have to have an individual review for each driveway. Everything's going to be different. The ones that want to get an individual proposal, we'll take the number one and either make an exception and say yes or no and move on to the next do you want to do it all at one meeting or do you want to do this as this goes? That's a problem with him is we need a cutoff because at some point he's going to have crews sitting at the county line and saying what happened. Okay. In other words, I would like to, for his case, otherwise uh, I would tell him if no one else tells you anything, you have a permit in hand that says they're temporary, remove and restore. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to have him in Connecticut on the phone call and his guy's telling them to just pull off and not do anything. He's going to pull and keep going. So we're going to have an individual review. We need to do that prior to November 1st. Uh, we need to do it soon. Sorry, no. Well, and then about that time, he won't show up till next summer. So <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll know if the if, if down the chin driveways, if somebody calls me, yeah. if you guys call me and want me to go look at a driveway with you, I would be willing to do that and see what you want to do there. Yeah, it's a number of them, but I'm large. No, there is. And my biggest concern is the ballast feature. And, and the ballast we can pull, that's not a problem. I don't have a problem pulling, you know, if you want to 
There's a little bit of 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 a little you remove the ballast and you got to come back with something, or if you got to extend and flatten. Uh, generally, they put 60 foot of pipe in, I think. Yes. yes. And so some it of the di deeper yeah. ditches you might end up easily with a 25 foot top, but on a paved route, 60 foot isn't much pipe. When you have six to one, if you got a four foot ditch or even a three foot ditch at six to ones, you got 18 foot of pipe on either side. You need 36 foot of pipe just for your We have it. It's on all these days. There's probably 100 feet of pipe. Okay, so they got longer ones. Oh, yeah. It's worth more. Well, then you got a better deal. You got 100 foot of pipe instead. Yeah, if it's a piece of water, it would be 100 feet of pipe. There's some that are 80. Yeah, it depends on the size of the deal. In the dip of the agenda, we couldn't make action as long as we wanted to. They even got the agenda. We don't meet the 7th. We're going to meet the 14th. It looks like we're pretty busy until 10.30. At 10.30 on the 14th, we can have some action item on there. <coughs> How we're going to proceed on this, if that would be people approved. That's two weeks. Is that too soon? Uh, we're, in the con we're in construction, and you got another one to go out. Uh, that might be fast, but on the other hand, that should be before. When's harvest going to happen? Two weeks. Three 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 weeks. We decide we're going to decide on the 14th. How are we going to proceed? The 21st. Is that right? What do you want to do? You can't have those plans in the beginning. You can have the plans in June. Yes. Yeah. I see. Your what your goal is. Uh, I'm trying to be clear myself. Is we'll meet and we'll uh, decide decide what exceptions you're going to come. The driveway owner is going to come for an exception to the per, uh, by the uh, two weeks from now. Is that uh, how you're going to rule on it, or what are you doing? So what you're saying is, you're going to say if Marshall's ballast has to be pulled off, you're going to haul black dirt in there. It's going to cost X amount of dollars. That's what it said. Can't they just cover the ballast a little bit of redstone? Yeah. 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 Some pieces. Yeah. 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 Right. You've seen where it's Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was There's like, no way you're going to cover that. Well, some of them are, yeah. That right. But I'm just saying. In some of them. But that's what I'm saying. That's the proposal for the 14th or the 21st. Maybe I'll the 21st and have consulting with Dave at that time to bring in a proposal to one by one by one at that time. Well, if you only got 10 or 12, it shouldn't take a day. As long as it, 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 it's not as much as us as the landowners. So two weeks is fine, they, but they need, it would be the landowners coming back in two weeks and yes, I want to do this and we need an exception to the driveway policy. Well, will they be notified beforehand that this is what? You can work with Dave to get one. Maybe we ought to go to the 21st. We have nothing on the fence. It's fine. There's more people to get through. I think we should arrange. We should arrange things. Our 50 support team is going to be wild. It's 56. We've got to go to the 21st. The majority of them. You're going to be in this. But that being said, we're going to be more than 5 minutes. Well, that will. I have that. That gives you three weeks. You have a plan to be here. I mean, we're going to be able to do this. We can do it. 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 The biggest thing is if you want something that's not on what was on the letter, it's not A, B, or C, if you want something that's Z, you need to see us. We need to make our recommendations to the owner and to the board prior to the meeting. So the owner has the opportunity to say, yep, or nope, by then I'm going to the board and take my chances. 
that clear for the owners out there? If you want to just an uh, existing drive that they just put it back at no cost, right? At no right. cost. I mean, they're going to restore it back to whatever it was. Yeah. I wish I would have put that on that questionnaire. That was my He's fault. On there. I should have. He didn't have that on there. I didn't put that. I wish it would. <laughs> they will restore to your original. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to, even if they somebody didn't send anything back, you're not going to pull it. No, drive. no. No, no existing driveway is coming out unless I'm requested to by you guys. They're going to put it back the way they were permitted, put it back the way it was. And, and he inventoried it, and both of them did. So, so well, just so keep it on. take the ballast off and put some roadstone back on the top or whatever, so, it's, so it just ain't pure mud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this land then acceptable? What we're talking about? 21st, prior to that time, meet with Dave. If you want to do something different than, than the policy allows and what we're setting on there. 21st, you'll come in, and we'll know, you'll know what you're proposing. If you didn't get approval from those people, you come to us and we we'll said we can make an exception. That, that way you send a bad call, Dave? Are you listening to that? Mm -hmm. That makes okay. sense? That or no, it makes sense. They need okay. to see us. They need to see us if they want something, if they haven't answered it and they want it, uh, the, uh, the A, B, or C that was on the letter. If it's anything beyond that, they better see us. We'll try to work additional details as needed. Right. And then if they still, uh, we would recommend if it doesn't meet policy, they still want it, then they got to come for an exception three weeks from now. Correct? Everybody right. agree? Everybody understand what we got to do? With that, Dave, when you get these requests in, would you print them up and make a packet for us so we can look at them? Yeah, so then we can maybe go out and look at them ourselves. Right. Or at least have it. Just look at them. Because <laughs> that means that we have to have it done for in excess of the two weeks or three weeks. If you have it by Thursday before. Three days before yeah. that. You want Thursday? That would be great. No, no, Thursday of the 21st. <laughs> 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 before the 21st. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the factors. Well, hey, you're getting one. Eight hours a day times three weeks. I'm going to be fine. 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 I'm going to be fine.
He had most of the new structure installed, has not pulled and, and gone back with the pipe for the drain tile, so he's still trying to make progress. Originally, before the rain, we scheduled to put uh, the concrete back in in place tomorrow or Wednesday. But uh, with that in mind, it probably won't be for a while before the resurface. But he's trying to do what he can do, staying above the water in the dredge pit. So, uh, uh, the other projects are wrapping up. Uh, uh, we'll see vouchers uh, completion. Uh, that's two weeks out, even because we don't even have claims nor meeting next week. But the other two projects with Wideman are uh, either complete or nearly complete. We have a little bit of dirt work out here to do yet. We're still in the process of raising the road grades. Uh, construction is moving along, uh, and uh, we're trying to. Uh, we do have some roads that didn't take it too well. The rain, I don't know what happened, uh, but uh, something heavy went right here. But the roads where it was mushy this spring are mushy now again. Oh, yeah, uh, they've been mushy, still are. Um, we had a uh, one snow removal route, no snow removal route this weekend. Something heavy went through it. We are closing that road on either end. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of rock. We have not rocked it, and, uh, and we're going to close it to save it. Uh, we'll blade it off. Part of town is that in just roughly? It's right by the uh, right by the project up here. They went oh. off the highway down and went straight across. Yeah. And it, it's a it's a muddy mess, but we are uh, hopefully uh, get that concrete on the. Uh, it was. It was a good plan to get the concrete placed this week on the road to replace it because then it would have the holiday weekend to cure out and we'd be back in business. But uh, that isn't going to happen, but uh, they're moving along well. Other contractors are planning on moving in uh, in the next week or so right after uh, Labor Day for uh, for the uh, Chatlin Blacktop project. So. Any progress on the truck body? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we probably should decide, and we got two weeks that we don't have a meeting, and I didn't agendize it this morning, but we have roughly uh, 15000 in it to put a used or a new box in it. The problem with the new box is it's not available until February. Uh, and then for about seven grand, we could probably put a slide in sander on it. That doesn't make our guys very happy. They want a truck with a box, but... Uh, for the winter, um, that is the only viable, the cheapest option is to put a slide in sander, just permanently mount it on the frame of the truck. So you don't need a box then? Don't, I mean, you just mount it on, well, the, well, just mount well, it on the frame. It looks like a tender. I don't think that's yeah. a bad idea. No. Uh, I hate to buy a new box on the whole truck. I mean, yeah, you take the new box off, put on there. another truck, I mean, you were messing around. Yeah. And, I mean, and, you just uh, go back and forth. It's already a used truck. I, Maybe you buy a used box. But well, that, the used box is even right maybe, up there. And maybe the cost is right up there. You know? And it's available now, but the cost is a couple grand off a new one. So, so you're saying we put a sander on it, mount it permanently, and we use it as a snow truck all. Just the only thing we'd use it for is a spare snow. So and I don't know that that's a blade on the front of it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, everything yeah. else is in the front. It's the the, the, uh, this particular one is the only truck in the county without a wing on it. Uh, it was... Uh, uh, so it is feasible. I hadn't brought you guys all that information, but there's really not a good answer with it. And then the good news is insurance is covering five, six thousand dollars of it. That so, helps. but so uh, is there any chance that it's used for trade in the next year? Well, yeah. It, it, if in the scheme of things, this would be the first truck to go on a trade. This is the oldest truck we have. That's what I'm saying, but if you put $15,000 on a sander, I mean, would we be better off to just say, here, we're going to trade it as the, as the frame, the truck, and no box? The, the, the truck is probably worth about the same with its miles, uh, with a box or without a box, right. as it was explain, explained to me, because it would be, it's got a heavy front end, which we have the 18,000 front axle on it, and the co-ops like it. Right, strip that's it and what I was wondering around. if we could get more without putting the sander on it, then you got that involved, and then when, what are we going to do with it? You well, the once sand. we trade it in, it's still worth 15,000, right. 18,000 with the sander, you take the sander, but the sander is a freebie. Right. 
and it's not anything. A sander is a high maintenance item. Exactly. Uh, it's a slide in sander. It's like maintaining a manure spreader. Yeah, it's they, worse. They always break when they're full. <laughs> so you guys, uh, yeah. That's why I hadn't. Uh, there's other things that I, the to get us by, it uh, appears that a sander would be good. On the other hand, I don't know. Uh, um, maybe we start looking at trucks. I know we were looking at patrols uh, for this budget year. Um, maybe we look at a truck. Maybe we get one, but we're still short one until February. He said if we ordered it by, you know, if you ordered a truck soon, you could be in a, in a February delivery or something. Hmm. Then you can bring us all over the options and we can ask them over on the first. Well, 14. 14. Yeah, I hope we're there before then. 14. But, uh, it's two weeks, right? 14. 14. I will email you his options. I didn't do that. Um, uh, we could use the truck, there's no doubt. And, and uh, it, uh, maybe we ought to consider putting it, putting either one of two things, a new truck or very little in the truck to get us by. And, right. And that's, that's buying the sander, unfortunately, and putting 7,000 in the truck to get it back on the road with the sander. And when you're all done, it doesn't add $7,000 right. in value to the truck. Well, that sander work on some other truck sometimes? Uh, no, I hope not. Because we just finally got rid of all so the get Danny Lippo and Hardy would love to have it. So we're going to get some insurance settlement even if we don't. We, just we already it. did. We got 5000 so or something. If you wanted to look at a new truck and just trade it, we've got our money out of the insurance, all we're going to get. The truck, we know exactly what it's worth without putting any more money into it. Maybe we need to be doing that. Right, and I have I have budget price. You love that truck in the next year. What's another six months jump? I'm looking at. Well, I would also need to advertise it to see if it's co-op because they're always looking for a tender truck too. If it was a tender truck, then we'd fix the frame. The frame on the truck is sprung. Uh, if we put the sander on it, all they do is shim the sander. Oh. Uh, so it's that a might be time to trade. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Get us money to settle it. All right, I'll just ship them out. Uh, no, we won't. Uh, I'll ship you what his deals were via email. You can see them, um, and it's it's will save save some money. Uh, we we are still trying. The insurance company at the time they paid us didn't know if the truck frame was broken. Okay, it's it is. It's not like much of a settlement for a for a ruined box and a twisted frame. Well, the box doesn't get paid because the box was the rotten part. The box failed because of age and fatigue. So anything it doesn't matter that. Right? So insurance doesn't cover the box, but it covers all the damages from there on out. The bent place, the bent cylinder, uh, the bent frame, and that's what we haven't got. We think it's about two thousand to get the frame straight. So that's we should get that yet out of the insurance. So we'd be done with the insurance at that. I was going to get the final ruling from the insurance, and then I'll send you our options, but. At one time, chasing your tail, uh, uh, adding more money to it, or or just bite the bullet and buy new. Anyway, so we have fixed that new ball. What do you expect to hear? Hi, we're from the government. We're here to help you. Is this just hitting this county, or is it in all? No, it's hitting other counties. I forwarded I forwarded one email to you last week on what it means to the county. I talked to some engineers down the line and they hadn't heard about it. Jack and Frank and Johnny said, what are they talking about? Right. They're, they're starting, and, and uh, there's a map, and there's affected, uh, I don't even remember, it was Southern Iowa that uh, that I forwarded an email and he sent questions out as to the zoning had to match the maps and whatever. And uh, 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 what we're going to hear is, is that uh, these are uh, undevelopable, and from FEMA's perspective, you shouldn't be building in these flood flood areas. Which, in most cases, uh, people aren't going to build in the flood area, but they might fill in the flood area and then build. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to add some more time to do that. What, what if we don't like it? What what do we do? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, but it's interesting is that uh, the floodway itself, uh, and we'll hear this afternoon, and, and we'll give them the chance to explain, uh, and then we need to talk about it, and I would suggest uh, on any of these hearings or whatever, you formulate as a group or as an individual, and you write letters to document what you believe is true, accurate, fair, reasonable. Um, 
they're using some pretty high numbers for floods. Uh, we are not designing our structures to match the numbers they're giving us. So, hope we don't see them. And I and I can build a dock at my place if these are true. So, very good. What you might be telling us, no, it'll be this afternoon at city and county, and then tonight it's an open forum for the public. Does the public know about this? I've asked them on, the on radio. And and uh, set up in the field last yeah. yeah. Peggy, Peggy's out there. Peggy, Peggy what is the meeting going to be? Right here in the basement. Oh, in the basement also. Uh, uh, magistrate room. Mm -hmm. I'll probably come to the basement meeting, I guess. Mm -hmm. that's well, this is open in the afternoon, yeah. too, so... Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you have an amend or agenda ice for tonight too, yeah? I have an agenda. Oh. Uh, I hope nothing. nothing? Oh. If you do the right thing, is going to be on the 21st? Well, um, you'll be able to identify and what you can What's do you at any time is uh, give a design, uh, an exception to policy. They need to meet with you guys to bring forth the policy. And some of it, uh, some of them are uh, too many driveways. Uh, some of it's going to come out to what you've always yeah, had, or we're in the access end. to nowhere. In the end, there isn't that many requests. Right. A lot less than what I anticipated. Know, the ones that didn't sign back, we got to assume they're done deal. They're just, they're just, they're just, Unfortunately, the problem is, is if we would have known that they were going to keep them, even on these extensions on the highway, where they lose, used like pipe, you could have started from there and got right. right. That's the problem. But now, that's just the way it happened. Yeah. But that being said, out of 57 driveways, we're only looking at whatever you do. No, and this is a good way because then we don't have, uh, when we're in the middle of harvest or whenever they're pulling them out, all of a sudden we got, ho, 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 don't take that driveway out. We're going to have a, a playbook for the contractor so that everybody should be on the same page. We, we all might not be in agreement, but everybody will be in the same page. When in doubt, EC4 should remove the driveway for their permit. Mm -hmm. right. They wanted to get back to square one, the way they said it would be when they walked in here. Right, right. And that's why they have an environmentalist. That's what their job is to do, to get back to that. This is why Paul and I fought with these people for I don't know how long to get this agreement that made sense. You know, we were worried what they were going to do was just leave everything there, there with right ways, and we had a bunch of angry people, and Paul would have to deal with all these extra driveways, and the county would have to pay for it all. And so, you know, we had, I don't know how many meetings over it. When it was brought up, we talked about it, 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 None of this should be a surprise for any of these people. No. But you also have, they didn't, couldn't see it then when you before. Now they see the driveway there and they think, well, this is going to be so three, better three, be three, 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 yeah. three two thousand dollars. But even the repairs to get it up, it's going to cost something. Exactly. I mean, to pull even the ballast off and haul, haul the ballast away, then something needs to be put back. If that's the only thing left, um, they may have a uh, farmer A may have a good source. But if they don't have a good source, even a load of dirt hauled out there is several hundred dollars mm -hmm. if they hire somebody else to do it. That's what we're going to figure out how far you're going to go in the exceptions is what we're going to go down to. Thank you. Uh, Another uh, bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke by the attorney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a this is a dad over there. He's pretty happy, isn't he? Yeah. Lack of sleep, he made him happy man. <laughs> Any other thing for the county engineer? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have anything before we go to the report? <laughs> so, Jerry, what do you do this week? Mm. What? Peggy, my first meeting was um, CSS in Charles City on the 26th at 10 o'clock. And we were honored by the presence, I guess, of Director Charles Palmer and the Iowa Department of Human Services. And he actually gave a presentation to us, which he says he never does for any county, except that Bob Lincoln had came down and presented what we are doing as our region to help jumpstart some other area for him. And he, in appreciation, he gave a rundown of what's going on a little bit. 
I guess I've got a bunch of scribbled notes. I'm going to try and read through them. I haven't looked them over too good yet this morning. But the first thing he's, you know, we're talking about is our future goal is basically long-term care for disabilitated people. That's how he states it. Basically, we're going to try and fill the voids for these people that have disabilities that need to be dealt with on a higher level than what they can get you know, on their own or with family members. He talked about the four selected MCOs, which kind of surprised Bob and myself, where I asked Bob, I thought, you know, it looked like they were wanting to have two, but they've left four. And I think the reason maybe they did, when they did some of this stuff with the new Obama health care plan, you know, they started out with four, all of a sudden they've lost a couple that either went broke, couldn't compete, or so they're, they're at four. That being said, he said, we also reviewed a couple that didn't make it. There's one other company, and I don't know if it was Magellan or it was another outfit that spent well over a million dollars trying to get ready for their presentation to get involved in this, and they weren't accepted. So I don't know if they're going to shuffle them, kick two out and move two more in, or what they're, I mean, there's a little discrepancy on where they're at. And all this is supposed to be in fact by January 1st, very well. He talked about our region. He said that our region, there's 22 counties, we're you know, almost 25% of the state, and we are the leader in what's going on as far as moving forward. And I assumed we were because I just, you know, from what you hear from other counties, or, you know, they talk about our region all the time being proactive, moving forward, trying new things. He seemed very happy about that. He thought we were, um, you know, we're doing the right things. All right, so now there's in this last since this new uh, health care program started, 140,000 people have signed up in Iowa for the Medicaid new patient program with insurance. So, you know, whether they'll continue, that's a good question, you know, but they're on it, 140,000. So in doing so, that has saved $32 million in the first month in hospital costs doesn't mean that that's a complete savings because what did it cost to supplement getting these people on the insurance fund, but that's how they're looking at that number for the state. That being said, there's about 132,000 people with some form of mental illness in our state. Now that's pretty broad because that can mean you know, all kinds of, you know, from depression to, General depression or something to, else. to mental head injuries. I mean, I mean, that's a pretty wide range, but these people are being, you know, they're the ones that need to be addressed with the <coughs> part of the services. A big plus they're hoping that's going to work is this computer network. <laughs> Dr. Palmer, or I don't want to call him Dr. Palmer, just Director Palmer, Charles Palmer. Um, his thoughts are that he doesn't think there's a shortage so much of psych psychiatric bed space. He thinks it's more of a problem of getting diagnosed of what people have and in the right places. He thinks there's other ways to handle patients other than in the jails or trying to get in psychiatric bed. It's just that the system isn't communicating well as to how to direct these people in the right direction. So they're, they're on, there's a new computer system that's going on and he's hoping this is going to help solve some of the finding location of these beds and get people placed in the right direction. Um, and they're also basing this program on it starts all this it started all this first, but it's gonna it's gonna kind of you know, it's hard to explain a computer program, but it kind of breaks it down into age groups, gender groups and location. And they're trying to deal with those factors as far as trying to shift people around and find locations where I mean they're trying to break down the cases and deal better distribute them to the areas where they can get help. A point that he brought up is that Per capita in Iowa, we spend $22 per capita more than the national average, which if you guys think about that, or I thought of it right away, Iowa is a caring state. We probably get offered better services than the national average. So in some ways, we're probably you know, doing above and beyond what the national average is saying we should do, but being that said, that's just what we do, I guess. Um, what they're hoping this is really going to do is and what they've seen since this people have gotten on Medicaid is to bring down the charity case cost for the hospitals. The Iowa hospitals, he called it their charity cost, is down 18.5% since the implementation of these um, new health care plans. 
that's still one of the big areas that's expensive in most hospitals is, you know, people come in, go to church, they're going to get care. Somebody's going to take care of them. And if they don't have any money, you know, the hospitals have to work that out. So they're hoping to get that straightened around. Okay. He shall art region. <coughs> It was probably one of the best ones that have pooled our money together with all the 22 counties. We, you know, we all pooled our money and rebalanced our funding. We thought we were probably as far ahead as any of the counties as far as, or any of the regions as far as rebalancing the you know, counties that were high or paying more, paying less, and getting. We're not that far from having everybody close to the average, 37, 28, or whatever that is. Okay. And then, and then what else do I have here? Was there any discussion about whether or not the regions would be able to levy themselves instead of each individual county? That regions would have a separate levy than other regions? There was more discussion that what do you do to get the, all the counties at the same level? There seems to be, and he says that's, that'll have to come from the supervisors. If that's their goal, That'll be reached through the supervisors throughout the state, deciding that it should be the same across the state. Um, oh, one more thing. I'm skipping around a little bit. I'm sorry about that. But back to those MCOs, and I thought this is a good idea. You know, that, of course, when I talk about those MCOs, they're going to be dealing with $4 billion, not necessarily $1 billion each, but they'll have $4 billion of the state budget that they're going to be, that's a lot of money. So for some accountability, and I, I'm hoping this is enough, what they're going to do is, starting January 1st, provider systems will be ready. Okay, they, need, they will need to be certified, certified by then. As they go along, if they get behind or if they don't feel they're um, getting money out to the people to provide the service, services quick enough, they're holding 2% retention back. And if they don't meet some guidelines as far as payment on time and providing the services that they're supposed to, they're going to hold that 2% retention. So on a billion dollars, if you're an MCO and you get a billion dollars, 2% means something to you. I don't even know what that is. Would that be 20 million? Who knows what that is? It's a big number. So it's a big project. It's going to be massive. It's really scary when you start working with that kind of money and you turn it over to four companies and ask direction. but. That's our goal, that's our charge to work with them, trying to figure out how to provide better services at a less cost. So that's kind of what he talked about. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> it's interesting, you know, we got a good board, an active board. I do feel like, you know, we have good representation. I mean, the people show up for these meetings, and a lot of the providers from the area show up. But and I will tell Bruce, like we've said before, like when it comes to Humboldt or Wright or um, Algon or Pocahontas sometimes, it would be great to go to one of these because if you'd ever have to serve, I mean, there's so much to learn and it's just kind of interesting to see what goes on in the meeting, but a lot of stuff has to be covered in a short time sometimes. But. And then I had a meeting with um, CFR on Thursday at 6 p.m. This was my final meeting. And they treated me with cake. We even shared with Bruce, and they gave me a nice plaque and recognition of my years of service. And I'm just going to let Bruce talk about the meeting if there's anything he wants to share with you. So that's all I had. Thank you. Oh, Webster City. Sorry about that. You got cake. They liked you. It was good cake. It was good cake. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't have any <coughs> meetings uh, this week, but I did have a phone conversation with Bob Michelson. INS group uh, about the work progressing down at the LEC building. Um, we discussed some um, a few of the change orders coming. Um, one is the new doors in the sheriff's office and into the genius office and the deputy's office. There's three doors there that they're going to put commercial grade steel doors in so they're all uniform in the building and uh, the locking mechanisms that go on there, they're kind of spendy. Uh, and then we discussed also this wrap issue where in his engineering design he screwed up and he thought it was a six inch lift and it was actually a 16 inch lift and 
So after a lot of conversations with a lot of different people in the process, I think we've come up with a plan that they're <coughs> going to move the rampart into the old jail portion. It's, uh, it's actually going to be in the old evidence room. And then the door will be at the bottom of the ramp. And then uh, they'll use the existing door of the jail as the entrance door. Because they were going to put an added door there, now they're just going to change that to a window and use the existing door, because that door's shot anyway. It would need to be replaced for too long, so they're just going to move it down that there. I think it will work out pretty good. There was a consensus after about two weeks of discussion. <coughs> so so What's that? With that I'm going to discuss with <coughs> because that is a screw up on their part. Um, but you don't see any problem with the jail inspection as far as doing it that way. There won't be a problem for making changes. No. No, I don't believe so. Oh, basically, we just took the evidence room and used that area. And just redid it make this yeah. work. Okay. And it'll all work on handicap. Yes. Because, yeah, the right now, the existing ramp, I don't think is actually considered the ADA part. When it's in there, it's a little too steep. This one will be right. to meet the meet specs. We get to to that point, and they had a little issue with some concrete in town that was poured, <laughs> thinking that it was going to a drain, and <laughs> it go the drain didn't work. And had water running into a building over the weekend. Ouch. So, ouch. Mm -hmm. so that's good. That's all I got. Wednesday the 26th, it has not before Dodge. It has one incident of a powder bomb in a mailbox here in Humboldt for the yellowish color. I don't know what it's called, make examples of it saying in it was a plant fertilizer. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I also had a tanker that was tipped over. I, I think a car had hit it, but I'm not positive on that. But it tipped over and it only spilled about 150 gallons of diesel fuel. And they got it back <coughs> in the uh, Fort Dodge and cleaned it up right away. They also had a asked uh, for uh, 10 new fiberglass tanks. They're only good for so many years. And then they have to be replaced as tank raw, yeah, because they, they get bigger, they expand. Uh, they had a demonstration on uh, a tool they used for saving somebody that's in a bin, you know, and all that. That was quite a... Those are kind of neat. I've seen them on TV. Yeah. It's got a vacuum on it, and it sucks the... Uh, it goes down everywhere, but you got to locate that person before you, yeah. before you do it. But, uh, and then they had an update on the poultry flu virus, and that's supposed to be over, they say. But. And then after that, we had LEPC. Uh, Coles had donated $500 to the foundation and we haven't even sent out for sure yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was good something. Um, on that new truck they're trying to buy, it, it cost $500,000, they already have $228,726 put away for it that they uh, put into a fund. And then we okayed the funds for the for the new air tanks, and that was 10500 bucks. They also had a demonstration and a tool for saving people that are, are trying to find somebody that's down under the water that's around. <coughs> and then in the afternoon, uh, later uh, on that day, a DCAT came with the city. We finalized the UN budget, went over a contract with Miguel and went <coughs> meeting on rental house and uh, schools. We had given them 50000 until they had worded, uh, changed some of the wording. And they hadn't done it yet, but they were going to meet with them again. And then somebody 
Some gal came to our meeting, she wanted uh, four thousand dollars to uh, start a contract with Power Up Youth. And it, it was just a, for her to get an inform a bunch of information. Well, you can already get that information in books that are already out. So we kind of a consensus of the board went to uh, go ahead with that. And then I got a phone call from somebody on some grading check. I thought he was going to be on the agenda today, but he didn't, he didn't show up, so I don't know. But he was playing Grange in 2010. Well, that's a long time back. If that was the case, there'd be a lot of interest on that one. Mm -hmm. And that's possible because there are some of those that didn't get, have their final, you know, you can't start loving until everything is final. And we're going to have to do some additional studies on it. And things like that. We have to he said he was going to be on the agenda, but I think he had a funeral to come up, so he had to cancel. That was all I had. <laughs> on Tuesday, I had a Polycom conference call with Udno up in Jenna Gretinger. Uh, I listened to all the reports, and I guess their next meeting is on September 22nd, but it's going to be in Eagle Grove. Um, Rick Rasmussen from Wright County volunteered to see if I could get put on a, a board that he volunteered for. So I haven't been accepted on that board yet, so immediately I had to tell him that I wasn't able to serve on that board until they accept me on the board. So that was kind of, Rick was a little, I heard him crumbling in the background, but <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I, uh, I just said I don't want to screw up the rules. we got to go by the rules. So On uh, Thursday, I wrote, uh, met with Rick Hopper uh, at the county shed, and he took me around to most of the different uh, sites in the county for the, what they're jobs they got going on, so that was kind of interesting to go see um, all of the different activities they've got going, and, and uh, he's quite a rare, I mean, he's got his maps and just pulls stuff out, and, you know, we're sitting here, and then he'd show me, and we'd look up the, uh, he really does a good job. Uh, Thursday night, Jerry picked me up and I went, got to ride down to Webster City to, to the CFR board. Um, again, I was uh, got to listen to the reports and to hear um, the packet that they gave was, like I told Jerry on the way home, it's kind of hard to believe of all of the different things that they, and when you start reading it, it's just, wow. Um, they have a lot of things, a lot of activities going on, and uh, I have a lot of uh, to learn on that board, and they uh, appreciate what Jerry's done. They appreciate it so much that we got this nice big piece of cake for his 11 years on the board. Um, he done, he did a lot of good things with that board, and. Uh, they've left that, left the committee in, in pretty good uh, standing. So hopefully, um, I'll be able to try to comprehend and absorb some of the things because there's people from what eight different counties, yep. counties that are there, and plus a and, couple non yeah. So it's uh, it's really kind of interesting to listen to um, what is all going on. And, um, back to the other thing I was going to tell you on the Edmo, one of their main concerns was with what you mentioned, the bird flu. Mm -hmm. um, they, <laughs> one of the ladies that was giving her report said that they've uh, noticed a lot of people that are leaving uh, Wright County and Buena Vista County because of the bird flu. And 
no more jobs. Yeah. yeah. And that was a concern for them because, you know, when those kids leave the, school, um, the schools, the, it, it has an effect on, but those people are going to go somewhere. Um, and right now they're still in the process of some of them trying to relocate to find jobs. So well, the early yeah. estimates for Wright County was that they could possibly lose 35 students in their school. That's a big number. That's huge. <coughs> 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 you know, those people are going to higher paying jobs, they'll never come back. Well, well you'd hope, but I guess their biggest concern was that for the schools that, like Jerry said, that's a big number. Big number, 35 yeah, kids is. walk away. <laughs> that's a huge number. Of so other than that, I didn't do anything. Very good. That was enough. <laughs> well, I spent 13 and Friday morning down to one with Peggy. Peggy chaired the ISAC meeting because she president elected the organization. And what we had was a combination of each affiliate during the summer, or sometime in China now, had met and decided what they wanted to lobby for in the legislature next year. So we had representing there from the assessors, the county attorneys, the elders, community service, conservation, emergency management, engineers, environmental health, public health, information center, and the of sheriffs, two budget of and veterans affairs. <coughs> Everybody came in that with their little belly black, what they thought the legislature ought to do next year. And they are the little domain. We, we included mental health is a big part of that, many, many times old. It's still a big concern statewide. And I think the consensus there is we need to quit talking about money maybe and start talking about delivery services. And how we're going to deliver this instead of arguing what's going to cost. There's a lot of territorial discussions about this county does it, that county does it, and everybody jealous because they don't have it in their area, they have it somewhere in their area. So we got to get our act together. And that's true of all these things we legislate. And what we did that morning was go around and hear proposals from each affiliate, what they'd like to see changed area. Then the next day we went through and decided whether or not they should go forward or whether they didn't have enough credibility. One of the things we don't mean to put anybody down, but one of the things that the conservation comes conservation, even on emergency management people, they wanted to be the same as sheriff's department because they're hazardous duty. They wanted to be 25 years and out about um, hikers and those kind of things. They stepped over really hazardous. Well, the rest of us didn't agree with them for their opinion. That didn't mm -hmm. move forward. Maybe it should have. I don't know. Those mm -hmm. kinds of discussions came about. So we had all kinds of discussions about little things. Traders, for example, brought in a proposal on legislation dealing with automobiles. If a car is registered, you and your wife's name, and you pass away, your wife pays away, it costs 25 bucks to get that transferred to the other person. They want mm -hmm. that that way. All little things like that. Mm -hmm. So we had a day and a half of discussion. We go back to the 22nd of September and continue this, and then it goes to the ISAC group. Peggy, you get in, yeah, you get a job. But Peggy chaired the whole thing. She kept out of trouble. We got through a record time. Oh, Peggy. Yeah, I didn't know that. But um, yeah, very good discussion. You find out when you just sit and listen to the different affiliates. Um, what their issues are because you're not always aware of what they have that they have to deal with that's an issue. Um, a lot of proposals were brought forward. They were all in our books, but not every one of them got pushed forward to the next round. And then when we meet again on the 22nd, we'll decide if it's going to be a legislative priority or just an objective or whether it's going to be one of our main topics that we're going to push in the legislature. So, and Jamie Cashman and, I'm sorry. I was just going to say they, they did an excellent job. Um, the I tech staff of, you know, just explaining to everybody that was new on the board um, what they needed to do and how things were done. Soon these bottles that he had thought and maybe think something else. So Public health, for example, okay. came in. They want the bottle bill to include all caffeinated beverages. You know, evidently it's not now. So that everybody's got their own little thing. <coughs> you have to sort those it out. And we decided you can't always do it to the legislature and ask for money. You have to do something that's going to better the people rather than just say, Give me more money, give me more money. That was kind of a trade of that. Then when that meeting was over, I met with Joel and I said, I was a food writer for everything next year. We were trying to figure out a deal with her to see what happens. We do have the end of doing the earnings coming. That's all it does. We got, I think, Stan Wattenier, or maybe Carl. They're going to talk about the emergency. Carl probably will. How do we handle emergency to come to your county? 
we got some on the road. Mm -hmm. We're we'll putting together a pretty good agenda for those of you who We're starting work on the spring agenda, and we think we might get, uh, we've already been turned down by Grassley, uh, who's going to be working on getting the president out of the state, and just keeping on what's going on. That was it for me, my Thursday and Friday. Anything else? Anybody else got a report on? So move. 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 Move.